85 euros. 85 euros. That's how much it costs to buy the Hofa DDP maker if you want to make DDP files. That's insane. There's no way I'm spending $95 on this because I can make DDP files for free using Reaper. And I'm going to show you how to do that so we can save $95. Hey everyone, James here from James Set Productions. As a mixing and mastering engineer, I have delivered many DTP files to clients for CD printing over the years. And I always use Reaper for that. And the other day I saw someone on an audio forum asking about how to make DTP files. And most of the comments just said Hova DTP Maker. I mean, it's a good option, but it's also very expensive. What if the person is just a musician who makes and master their own record? It would make no no sense for a non-professional to spend that much money on something that can be done for free in another way. Even for me, who does this professionally, I don't want to be increasing my business overhead unnecessarily. So today, I will show you in five five easy steps how to make DTP files for free using Reaper. It doesn't matter which DAW you use, it doesn't matter if you have never used Reaper because I will show you the ropes. Just to keep the video as concise as possible, I'm not going to explain why you need to do certain steps, but if you want a super in-depth nerdy tutorial with information about Redbook CD standards, I will leave a link in the description to a blog post I wrote. There will be Reaper template for you to download to speed up your process of making DDP files as well. If you don't have Reaper already, go to reaper.fm download and install it. Reaper is only 20 megabytes, so it won't really cluster up your hard drive even if you only plan to use it to make DDP files. Step one is to set up Reaper properly. Open a new project in Reaper, go to files, project settings. Under here, make sure the project sample rate is checked and this is set to 44100 and then go to video, set the frame rate to 75 and then hit OK. Now right click on the ruler and select hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Next, go to actions, show action list and type grid settings. Double click this action. Make sure this one is checked and set the line spacing to frames and close the window. Now, if you zoom into the project, you can see that the project is divided by seconds. One second, two second, three seconds. Next, add a marker at the very beginning of the project. Put the cursor at the very beginning, go to insert marker, double click it, name it exclamation mark. Add another marker at two seconds. You can leave it blank for now. Step two is importing the master wave files. Locate the master wave files, drag and drop them at the two seconds mark. When you see this pop-up window, you want to choose single track. We now have all the master files lined up one after another on the same track. Make sure your record is no longer than 75 minutes. You can check that by going to the end of the last track, move your edit cursor here, and look at the time. This record is about 20 minutes long, so that's all good. Now that you have all your tracks lined up, step three is to add a marker at the beginning of each track and at the end of the very last track. We already have a marker for the first track, so I'm going to add one for the second track and then fast forward. Here's the second track. I'm gonna zoom in with the cursor here and insert a marker. At the end of step three, you should have a marker at the start of the project, like so, a marker at the start of each track, the first one at two seconds, like so, I've already added a marker for each track, and a marker at the end of the last track, like this one. The markers at the start of a track is actually where the song begins when people are skipping among the songs on a CD player. So it's very important that you place the markers correctly. Step four is adding all the metadata for your record. There will be metadata for the tracks and metadata for the record itself. Let's add the metadata for the tracks first. Double click the marker for track one and type the hash mark, which is ship three, and then type the track title. Now you know that backward slash key that is just above the return key. Here, let me show you. This vertical line is what I'm talking about. You can type the vertical line by holding shift and this key. Put a vertical line after the title and then write in all caps, performer equals, and this is where you put the artist name. If you can't find the vertical line for whatever reason, I've put it in the description so you can just copy and paste it. Don't worry, I got you. There are several metadata properties that you can put for each track, which are title, ISRC, performer, songwriter, composer, arranger, 
and message. You don't have to use all of them, but you want to have at least the title, the performer, and the ISRC. Make sure to use the vertical line to separate each metadata property and make sure not to put any space before or after the vertical line. Here's an example of a complete metadata for a track. Following the same format, write the metadata for the marker of each track. After that's done, now we're going to enter the album metadata. Double click the last marker, which is at the end of the very last track. The last marker is where you add the album metadata. Now, the formatting for the album metadata is pretty much the same as the track metadata, with only a couple of exceptions. Instead of putting the hash mark, put the at symbol and then type the album title. Again, use a vertical line as a separator in between each metadata property. For the album metadata, you should at the very least put the album title, obviously, the performer, which is the artist name, and the UPC or the EAN number, which you should have for your album before you put it for sell. The optional metadata properties that you can put for your album are songwriter, composer, arranger, message, identification, genre, and language. Step 5, which is the final step, is to render the actual DDP files. First, you want to set the time selection to start at the beginning of the project and end in the last marker. All you have to do is click here and drag it all the way to the last marker. And now we have the entire record highlighted. Go to File, Render. Make sure the source is Master Mix. Set the bounds to Time Selection. Set Output Format to DDP. Now, DDP files are, well, as the name suggests, a whole bunch of files, and they need to be all together when you send them for CD printing. So you want to put them into a folder in their own when you are exporting them. I'm just going to put them in a folder called DDP Files Tutorial. The file name should be exactly image, not anything else. Sample rate should be 44100, obviously, and make sure this is full speed offline. And now you can hit render. After rendering, you can show in Finder to actually look at the files. You'll see six files. These are the DDP files. Now you can compress this folder and send the whole zip file to your CD manufacturer. That's it. If you managed to follow me all the way through, good job. I'm proud of you. And now you know how to make DDP files without spending a penny. I hope you find that helpful. There's a link to a written, more in-depth version of this tutorial in the description. And you can also download a Reaper template where I already set up a project for you to make DDP files even faster. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Subscribe for more helpful music production content. Stay safe out there and see you next time.